Jesus. Okay, this video is on secants and tangents. And if we look at our diagram here, we're given a circle, uh, circle A, with two lines. There's an L1 and an L2. L1 is tangent to circle A. That means it intersects at one point. L2 is a secant to circle A. And we haven't talked about secants, the word secant right there. L2, uh, a secant means that it's a line that intersects a circle twice. So just a line that goes basically through a circle. So we have two uh, lines that intersect. And what we want to know, if that's 130 degrees for that arc right there, I want to know what this angle is between the two lines. Well, and to do that, what we need to do is make that 130 degrees help us. And to make it help us, I am going to first draw in the two radii. And that makes an inscribed angle. And that inscribed angle will match our given arc. Now, that's 130 degrees. So we have 130 degrees and this triangle, which happens to be two radii, forming an isosceles triangle. And if they're isosceles triangle, this angle right here will be congruent to this angle. The base angles are congruent. Let's call that angle B. That angle B. So B would be equal to, uh, let's see, what is it? 180 minus 130, All right? But then we have to cut them in half because there are two of them. So 180 minus 130, that's uh, 50 degrees. Cut it in. Excuse me, that's, that's, what did I do wrong? I didn't do anything wrong, did I just? Okay. Oh, that's good, that's good, we're good, okay. Uh, cut it in half, and that's 25. Uh, for a second there, I was worried. I, oh, wait a minute. All right, so, now to find X, we use the fact that L1 is tangent to circle A, which this is a right angle. So I'm going to take 90 degrees minus the 25 degrees given me my x, which that will be 65 degrees. Yay! Fantastic, right? Well, you might think that, well, if do I want to do that every time? So I've redrawn this, and I want to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to call this, let's call this A, we'll call this B, and here's my x, right? So this A is going to match the central angle A, Right, because that's the, there's the two radii. B is going to be what is B? How do we find B? We took 180 minus the 130 up there, and there's that 130 which is A, and then we cut it in half. And then to find X, we use the fact that it was tangent, so it was 90 minus B equals X. So 90 minus all of that. I'm putting it in parentheses, 180 minus A all over 2 equals X. I'll simplify. That's 90 minus A over 2 equals X. And distribute the negative, that's 90 minus 90 plus A over 2 equals X. Well, 90 minus 90, that's of course 0. So a over 2 is equal to x. Now, if you look at your original diagram, what does that mean? That the arc measure right there and that angle formed by the two lines means that it's going to always be half, just like an inscribed angle, magically. So we're going to write that down as one of our conjectures. Here we go. I'll write it right here. The measure. of the angle formed by the intersection of a tangent and a chord. And remember, a chord would be, it intersects a circle twice, so a chord that the line containing a chord would be the secant. So that follows at the point 
up, tangent C. I'm just describing what was given. The measure of the angle formed by the intersection of a tangent and a chord at the point of tangency is equal to half the intercepted arc. There you go. In other words, x is equal to half of a. Right on. All right, we have talked about tangents and secants, and this video is on two secants that intersect. And if you can see, what I've given is two secants which intersect outside the circle. I'm also given the arc measures of two of the intercepted arcs. So, uh, and what we're solving for is the angle that is formed by the intersection of the two secants. Well, once again, I need to make the angles that are given work for me. So what I'm going to do is introduce a chord that goes from the point of intersection here to the point of intersection here. And by doing that, I have now formed an inscribed angle of the arc in, in that intercepts 128 degrees. And as you remember, the inscribed angle would be half of the 128 giving me 64 degrees. And another inscribed angle is on the other side. So this inscribed angle would be half of the 42 giving me 21. And you may say, well, now I can find out what X is because there's 64 is supplementary to this angle and this angle plus 21 is equal to X. But there's an easier way even than that because I can remember an earlier conjecture that said an exterior angle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. Remember that the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. And that's what it means. And so there we go. And if I take off 21 from both sides, this would give me 43 degrees equals X. Shorter, quicker, done. Yes? Fantastic. Well, I have redrawn the picture, but now with variables. Now, maybe we can come up with a rule that works every time. So I'm going to solve it the same way by introducing the chord that goes from intersection point to intersection point. Now. This is my inter inscribed angle. There's A, so this must be half of A. There's B. That's half of B. And once again, the measure of the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. This one, that out. B2 plus X. Solving for X, that's A over 2 minus b over 2 equals x, and I can put a minus b over 2 equals x. Well, what is that in, in words? Basically, that this, the larger arc minus the smaller arc divided by 2 will be the angle that is uh, of the intersection of the two secants. And so I wrote it up as a conjecture. Here you go. The conjecture. Uh, I don't know what numbers. You can fill in the number that it's supposed to be. Uh, ask them. The intersecting secants outside the circle. The measure of an angle formed by two secants that intersect outside a circle is equal to half the difference of the intercepted arcs. Put it in your notes and use it wisely. Now, we are now finally to intersecting secants that intersect inside the circle. Well, and I put the word chords down here because if they do intersect inside the circle, now you do actually have two chords that are intersecting. But you can think of a chord as a part of a secant. And once again, I'm given a circle with two secants that intersect in, in the interior of the circle, two arc measures, and I want to know the angle that is formed by the intersection of the two lines. Well, I've got to, uh, same story, different verse, create a chord that makes the numbers tell us something. 
now I have an angle, inscribed angle that is half of the intercepted arc. So this one's 18. This one is half of the intercepted arc. This one's 80. And just like before, the measure of the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. Could that be any easier? Oh my goodness. That one is 98 degrees. Ta-da! Fantastic. Now, what happens if we have it with variables, right? So, if we do this one, so we're going to do the same thing and add my chord in there. And this one is going to be half of B. This one's going to be half of A. And Y is equal to the sum of the remote interior thing. A, to half, a plus half of B, otherwise known as Y is equal to A plus B divided by 2. Or the average of the intercepted arcs. And I have written that up as a conjecture here. The intersecting secants, uh, when, if they intersect inside, or otherwise known as chords, or you call it intersecting chords, the measure of angle of the measure of an angle formed by intersecting chords is the average of the intercepted arcs. So now you have all three iterations. You have a tangent with a, a secant, two secants that intersect outside the circle, two secants that intersect inside the circle, and now what you need to do is I have have three problems right here. On problem number one, you're giving it a tangent and a secant, and there's a diameter. Yes, this is circle A, and the problem is asking, what is the measure of EB? Number two, what is the measure of arc BC? Yes, we, I have also, don't forget that I've given you that measure of BCD, that's a 63 degrees. Number three, what is the measure of BEC? And you can... That BEC, just, just a little reminder, that's the little, that's the major arc, BEC. In this one, down here, we have uh, a given angle of 15, uh, given angle is 88, and this time you're looking for the arc measure. Now that's going to be a little bit confusing, may, possibly, because that doesn't follow exactly the conjecture that I wrote, yes? Uh, so you'll have to look at that and do your algebra correctly. And then finally, two secants that intersect in the interior for two chords, right? Have those ready for tomorrow, and we will see you then.